Yeah? All right. Welcome to the Policy Manual Review Subcommittee. Um, tonight we're going to have Alyssa Haggerty presenting to us on sections E and L of the School Committee Policy Manual. And I will establish a quorum. Cynthia Mendez? Here. And Judy Sullivan, I'm the chair and I'm here. So, hello, Alyssa. Oh, no, that's my phone. Oh, gosh. <laughs> ah. All right. Hello, is Alyssa on? Here she comes. Okay, hello. <laughs> Are you ready to present, Melissa? Or uh, can she? I can't hear her now. There we go. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. But yes, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, we're ready. But do we want to do? All right. I can't. I can't see anything on my end. I don't know if that makes a difference, but I can hear you, so that's fine. So everybody's there. Yes. That yes. Needs to be. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just going to share my screen for a minute. <clears throat> and pull up just a quick update so we can see where we're at. Okay, um, so as a quick progress update, I just wanted to go over the sections that have been completed and the sections that are upcoming. So section A, foundations and basic commitments is complete. Section B, board governance and regulations is complete. Section C, general school administration is complete. Section D, finance is complete. And section F, facilities development is complete. Being presented tonight is section E, support services. Um, and section L, which was on the last agenda, but we didn't have enough time to get to it, which is agency relations. That will leave section G, personnel, which is pending final edits from legal. Section H, negotiations, which is pending final edits from legal. Section I, instruction, which is being prepared for legal. Section J, students, which is under review, and Section K, community relations, which is being prepared for legal. Um, as a quick update to the policy packet, these policies are kind of being worked on, not necessarily always in the order in which they um, fall in your manual. It's just a matter of time management, more or less. So this packet was originally submitted for policy review at the end of the summer. Um, and it's important to know because at that time, the general direction related to COVID policies prior to the Massachusetts Commissioner of Education's mask mandate was that mandates were being lifted and many COVID related practices were being reduced. Um, shortly after we submitted this packet, the mask mandate was announced and additional guidance related to COVID and school policies was finalized at the federal and state levels. So after the packet submission, MASC also made changes to its adoptive policy, which is ECBFA, and therefore the original recommendation to omit that policy reflected in this packet has been revised to replace policy EBCFA with the current MASC School Committee policy EBCFA, which was adopted on August 10th, 2021 by MASC. And I've included um, the full text both here <clears throat> and in the policy packet um, that has been updated. So this policy and all policies should be reviewed, of course, annually and or as new recommendations, guidance or mandates are released by local, state and federal officials. Um, and that is particularly pertaining to the pandemic and pandemic related policies. So with that, I will get right into this. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment, come back. We're gonna start with section L, only because that was on the last agenda. It 
And section L is a small section. I believe there were four policies all together. Um, we'll start with the first one, which is section LA education agency relation goals. This is an MASC policy, which had very minimal updates just to reflect its most current version. The next policy, section LB, relations with other schools in school districts. Same idea, this is a MASC policy that's been updated to reflect its most current version. You can see just some general language updates that were consistent with other policies in the manual. The next policy is section LBC, relations with non-public schools. This is more or less a hybrid policy. Um, I've recommended removing the homeschooling language and the reason being is that you have two policies dedicated to homeschooling already. Those are sections IBGH and IBGH-R. And those have been recommended to be retained with the MSAC updates. Those policies in their most updated form are at the end of this document just for reference purposes. <clears throat> The next section is LDA, student teaching and internships. This policy has a few revisions. Uh, more or less, the query language was removed. There are two sections, again, that already have been approved by the policy committee re related to query and background checks. Those are section ADDA and ADDA-R, which we did in the first packet. Section ADDA-R does apply to all employees and interns and the introduction reads. This policy is applicable to the criminal history screening of prospective and current employees, subcontractors, volunteers and interns, and professional licensing applicants. Where criminal offender record information or quarry and other criminal history checks may be part of a general background check for employment, volunteer work, licensing purposes, the following practices and procedures will be followed. And again, that full policy is at the end of this manual and it's already been approved in the very first packet. <clears throat> so those are the four kind of brief policies in section L. Um, does anybody have any questions? Let's see if I can pull you back up. If not, we'll keep, there we are. We'll keep moving forward to the next section, which is section E. Oh. Is, does she know we can't see that pack? Alyssa, we just can't see it on the... Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought we were looking at the writing, too. But, okay. Yeah, no, we got these, so... Yeah, we don't need to. All right, thank you. So we're done with L. Is there any questions? No? Okay. No questions, Alyssa. No questions? Okay. No. So moving on to Section E. Um, this section was notably more outdated. Many of these policies haven't been reviewed um, since 2002 was, I think, the, the, the original date for the majority of them. It is a bigger section, so this one will take a little bit more time to get through, and there are quite a few recommendations. Um, so if you need to interrupt to have me stop so you can ask questions, feel free. Um, I'll try to go as slow as I can. The first policy is EB, Safety Program. This is a MASC policy. It's been updated to reflect its most re recent version. <clears throat> There was actually minimal language updates here. The context of the policy has remained the same. The next is EBAB. This one is titled Hazardous Waste Contamination. So section EBAB is classified under MASC as a different title. It's classified as pest management, not hazardous waste contamination. Um, so this, this is one that kind of got mixed up along the way. My recommendation is to remove this policy altogether and revisit these steps in your procedures or your facility and maintenance employee training. 
as you can see when you go through, it's a pretty detailed list um, of a process for hazardous waste contamination. And it's, it's probably being done in an updated version, um, or it might even fall under some type of federal training like OSHA or something like that. <clears throat> the next policy is okay. EBABA, which is titled Pesticides in School. Um, so this policy is the Brockton Public Schools policy for pesticides in schools. And the following policy is the MASC policy for pest management in schools. So this was kind of where the mix-up came in. This particular policy is based off of Mass General Law Chapter 85, which is titled An Act Protecting Children and Families from Harmful Pesticides. Um, I, I did consult with legal who was confident that the following policy covers both the major aspects of this policy um, as well as the as well as covering the act that was previously mentioned which is MGL chapter 85 so my recommendation for EBA BA is to remove this policy and replace with the following policy which is going, comes up as EBABA pest management policy. <clears throat> this is the MASC official policy for pest management. It's based off of MGL title, I believe that's title nine, chapter 71, section 68, duties of towns to maintain schools, transportation of children, school building committee representation. Um, so this is a policy that encompasses the prior two policies and it's also classified correctly with the MASC titles that are in their most recent policy manual. The next policy is policy EBB, which is first aid. And the recommendation was to replace this policy with the updated MASC policy. Um, and as you can see, that made quite a few changes. So I'm gonna read through this one. The new policy would read, the district attempts to provide a safe environment. If an accident or sudden illness occurs, school personnel will administer first aid. And if warranted, call emergency medical services. In the case of illness that may include an infectious disease, the school physician shall be notified in accordance with law. First aid is defined as the immediate and temporary care given in case of an accident or sudden illness, which enables a child to be taken safely home or to a physician. It does not include diagnosis or treatment. Any care beyond first aid will not be given. At each school, procedures will be developed for the proper handling of an injury to or sudden illness of a child or staff member. These will be made known to the staff and will incorporate the following requirements. Number one, the school nurse or another trained person will be responsible for administering first aid. Number two, when the nature of an illness or an injury appears in any way serious, every effort will be made to contact the parent guardian and or a family physician immediately. Number three, in extreme emergencies, a school nurse, school physician, or principal may, take, may make arrangements for immediate transport to a hospital of injured or ill students, contacting parent or guardian in advance, if at all possible. Number four, the teacher or other staff member to whom a child is responsible at the time an accident occurs will make out a report on an official form providing details about the accident. This will be required for every accident for which first aid is given. Number five, all accidents to students and staff members will be reported as soon as possible to the superintendent and if the superintendent deems appropriate, the school committee. Um, the way that this policy is updated within MASC, I believe is consistent with more or less the process that's followed right now. So I thought the, um, the updates were appropriate. You can see a few of the things that were removed um, included things like call 911 for emergency assistance. No young child who is ill or injured will be sent home alone, nor will any older child unless the illness or injury is minor. A young child who is ill or injured will not be taken home unless it is known that someone is there to receive him or her. 
And if a large scale in school emergency occurs, all school nurses will be notified by central administration to report to the emergency scene. So these are just some practices that were probably followed in the early 2000s um, that are no longer relevant as part of your policies today. The next policy is, <clears throat> okay. Policy EDC, emergency plans. So the recommendation is to replace Brockton Public Schools policy EDC, emergency plans, which again was last updated in 2002 with MASC policy EDC, emergency plans in its entirety. So the language in its original policy is at best minimal. Um, the language and process could be strengthened to develop a stronger safety policy. Replacing the original EBC emergency plans policy with the updated MAC policy will require revisiting the school department's plans individually at the school buildings and putting together a comprehensive plan and method for coordinating communication, response, post-event support, and safety precautions. Most of those things already exist, um, but as always, it's a good idea to revisit them as these policies are updated. However, this plan will provide an additional layer of safety and this policy requires revisiting the practices at least every three years or when changes occur. Moving on, we have section EBC-S, policy on COVID related issue. So this was a MSC policy that was in existence at the time that this packet was submitted and has since been um, removed from MASC policies. So the recommendation to omit this policy is still the recommendation at this point. The reason being is um, it was omitted from the review manual, but it's been repurposed with MASC as just general guidance on policy issues during the pandemic. Um, so they're suggesting rather than making these items actual policies to use them to kind of guide your decision making and your policy making moving forward. <clears throat> but they've taken it out as one big lump sum permanent policy. The next one up for review is EBCD emergency closed closings. This is a MASC policy that's missing from Brockton Public Schools policies. And I thought it was a strong policy and the recommendation is to add this policy. Um, EBC-R guidelines, emergency procedures, prevention and response plans. Um, the recommendation agreed upon by myself and legal was to omit this policy in its entirety and address this in your procedures book. Since we're talking about an entire policy being remitted, I will read this one. In the event of an emergency, the following responses as applicable shall be made promptly and properly. Number one, in the event of a fire before attempting to extinguish the fire, before attempting to extinguish the fire, call the fire department immediately and evacuate the building. In the event of a hazardous spill, contain the flow of spill material to the extent possible, and as soon as practicable, clean up the spill material, contaminated materials, or soil. In the event of a release or threat of release of oil or hazardous material into the environment, the generator shall do the following. Immediately call the fire department, 911, then the Office of Administrative Services, extension 7577. Um, and then the Office of Administrative Services will arrange for a professional cleanup and notify the superintendent and deputy superintendent. Lastly, the generator shall notify the superintendent, deputy superintendent, and Office of the Administrative Services the following information. Administrator's name, address, type of incident, quantity and type of hazardous waste, spilled or released, extent of injuries, if any, and estimated quantity and disposition of recovered materials. Um, so as you can see, many of these many of these items one through four um, are certainly outdated I'm sure the extensions are are different the process has changed quite a bit over the years so I think it makes sense just to omit this one altogether next is EBCFA face coverings um, at the time that this packet was submitted this policy was not in place with MASC 
This was adopted by MASC on August, I believe it was August 10th. Let me scroll down to the bottom, August 10th, 2021. Um, so because this was not in place yet, the recommendation at that time was not to include this because it didn't exist. Um, having said that, since it is in existence at this point, I would say the school committee probably has a decision to make whether they would like to adopt this policy um, or really not to. Obviously, we're under a mass mandate at this point, so it wouldn't change anything one way or another unless that mandate was lifted. You would either have a policy in place, EBCFA, face coverings at that point, or you would not. <clears throat> so I'm going to keep scrolling because I'm sure you've seen that one. Um, next, we have EBCA, Emergency Management Plan. BCA. So the emergency management plan policy has already been addressed in section EBC, emergency plans. The recommendation is to remove EBCA and include an updated version in the procedures book with a more detailed description of how to respond to different types of emergencies. Um, so again, this is an outdated policy that at one point was probably meant to serve as more as, as more of a process or a procedure um, prior to having those types of documents in place with the school department. <clears throat> Next, we have EBCAB, civil disturbances. Um, this is, at this point, just a Brockton Public Schools specific policy. The rec recommendation is to remove this policy and revisit this in your procedures manual. This has to do with specific responses um, at different building levels and who would respond to different types of scenarios, which I think makes much more sense and probably changes quite frequently, depending on leadership, depending on building dynamics and things like that. And those decisions typically are more appropriate um, at the school level as opposed to as a district policy. Next, we have EBCB fire drills. I just wanna make sure I'm following this correct. So the recommendation here is to retain this policy with the updates noted, um, more or less. We updated the language to reflect MASC, and we made a couple of brief changes here, specifically to number four, which has changed from represent representatives of the Fire Prevention Bureau will periodically visit the schools of the city for the purpose of conducting supervised fire drills. School administrators will give complete cooperation to the represent <clears throat> to the representative of the Fire Prevention Bureau and except in most unusual cases will conduct the fire drill as requested. That language has been removed and replaced with the school district will cooperate with the fire department in maintaining fire safe conditions within all school buildings and in regularly conducting fire drills for the protection of students and staff. Additionally, number nine was added, which reads, all children transported by bus will have emergency evacuation drills from the school bus each year. Buses will also be inspected for fire extinguishers and emergency exits. Next, we have section EBCC, which is bomb threat. Again, this policy was last updated in August of 2002. This is a Brockton specific policy. Uh, the recommendation is to remove this policy and revisit this in your procedures manual or more specifically in your emergency management plan. Um, this is an outdated procedure more or less to how you would respond to a bomb threat, which obviously based on um, law enforcement recommendations, I'm sure has changed quite a bit throughout the years. Next, we have EBCD-E school cancellations. 
and this is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy. The recommendation here is to remove this policy as school cancellation should be advertised through controlled channels of communication. Um, this information can now be shared with the entire school community directly through email, text, voice call, delayed start and school dismissal schedules can be shared at the school level annually and not necessarily in the policy book. And we also already addressed this language in the school closing policy. So if you take a look at this, it's a pretty specific layout of what would happen as far as a process for a school cancellation. Technology has changed leaps and bounds since 2002. Um, and many of these times have changed, the schools have changed. Um, so it doesn't necessarily make sense to have this as a policy. This is more of just a process that should be handled specifically with your superintendent's office and your communications department. <clears throat> Next is EBCDA, which is storms, hurricanes, and tornadoes. Again, this is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy, and the recommendation is to remove this policy as all weather events are covered under the emergency cancellations and closings. Next is EC, Buildings and Grounds Management. This is an MASC policy, which was updated to reflect its most current version, which includes the language in the last paragraph, which reads, each school will have an integrated pest management program or an IPM. IPM is a sy systematic strategy for managing pests, which considers prevention, avoidance, monitoring, and suppression. And when chemical pesticides are necessary, a preference is given to materials and methods which minimize public safety and reduce environmental risk. Um, and I think that's certainly worth including in your policy. <clears throat> Next is ECA Buildings and Ground Security. This is an MASC policy that just had a couple of small language updates to reflect its most recent version. Moving on to ECAB, Access to Buildings. Um, this is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy and the rec recommendation is to retain this policy with a couple of small changes. We added um, the word exterior to number two and number six was changed to in the event that an intruder enters a building, each principal should initiate an alert to staff members that an emergency exists and that they must follow emergency precautions and procedures. Next, we have ECAC vandalism. This is an MASC policy, which has been updated to reflect its most recent version. ECAE, school police responsibility. This was once a MASC policy, but it's no longer used in the MASC policy manual. The recommendation is to omit this policy um, all procedures can be addressed that are outlined in this policy in the Transportation Procedures Manual and Trainings. And this was also um, submitted to legal for review and they also re recommended, recommended removing this policy. <clears throat> Next is EDC, Authorized Use of School-Owned Material. This is an MASC policy, which has been updated to reflect its most recent version. Next, we have EEA. School Transportation Services. This is an MASC policy updated to reflect its most recent version. Um, there were a couple of language updates. The policy now reads, the major purpose of the school system's transportation service is to aid students in getting to and from school in an efficient, safe, and economical manner. The school system may contract for transportation services 
The contracts will be awarded on a competitive bid basis by the school committee. Bus contractors and taxi contractors who will be held responsible for safe operation of school buses will comply with all applicable state laws and regulations, including but not limited to specific specifications for school bus design and equipment, inspection of buses, qualifications and examinations of bus drivers, driving regulations, small vehicle requirements if applicable, insurance coverage, adherence to local regulations and directives as specified in bid contracts. The superintendent with the bus contractor and other appropriate administrators will be responsible for establishing bus schedules, routes, stops, and all other matters relative to the transportation program. And the legal references are included. <clears throat> Next, we have EEA-E, -E, Student Transportation Services. This is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy. It is not an MASC policy. Um, we did not think that this policy was necessary at this time, and the recommendation was to omit it in its entirety. Next is EEAA Walkers and Riders. This is an MASC policy. It's been updated to reflect its most recent version. Um, this policy did see quite a few changes. You'll see the entire first section has been redlined. And I will read the new policy as it's stated. Students will be entitled to transportation to and from school at the expense of the public schools when such transportation conforms to applicable provisions of the Massachusetts general laws. Reimbursement to the school district for transportation costs is given by the Commonwealth subject to appropriation only for A, students living at least one and a half miles from school, or B, students who live more than one mile from the nearest bus stop, and C, students with special needs for whom transportation must be provided. Additionally, the committee will provide transportation for students as follows. In kindergarten, all students except those living in immediate proximity to the school as determined by the superintendent, grades one through, one through three, students living more than one mile from school, grades four through six, students living more than one and one half miles from school, or grades seven through 12, students living more than two miles from school. Exceptions to these guidelines may be made at the discretion of the superintendent, and this will apply particularly to any student who must travel in a hazardous area to and from school. These students will be transported regardless of the mileage limits listed. And this policy was last adopted by MASC in August of 2016. <clears throat> Next, we have EEAE School Bus Safety Program. This is another MASC policy that was reflected, that was updated to reflect its most recent version. And the new policy reads, the safety and welfare of student riders will be the first consideration in all matters pertaining to transportation. Safety precautions will include the following. Number one, children will be instructed as to the proper procedure for boarding and exiting from a school bus and improper and safe conduct while aboard. Number two, emergency evacuation drills will be conducted at least twice a year to acquaint student riders with procedures and emergency situations. And number three, all vehicles used to transport children will be inspected periodically for conformance with state and federal safety programs. And lastly, number four, classroom instruction, instruction on school bus safety will be provided. <clears throat> and the legal references are included, um, as well as the highway safety program standard number 17. Next is EEAEA. I'm going to try not to mix these up. EEAEA is bus driver examination and training. Another MASC policy updated to reflect its most recent version. There was not much that changed with this policy. Um, the original number three was removed, which read no person less than 18 years or over 70 years of age. And only persons of high character will be allowed to operate school buses, assuming that um, may not 
comply with discrimination laws at this time. So that's been um, updated in the MASC policy manual. Next, we have EEA E A dash E school bus driver responsibility. This is a Brockton Public Schools specific policy, um, and the recommendation is to remove this policy and revisit this in your procedures. And this policy more or less um, describes the operator of a school bus or a van and some of the different um, disciplinary things that might take place and some of the first aid equipment that should be included um, on your buses and your, and your vans. Next is EEAEC, student conduct on school buses. Another MASC policy updated to reflect its most recent version. And this was just general language updates that are included throughout the policy manual. Next is a Brockton specific policy, EEAEC-R, student conduct on buses. Um, the recommendation was to remove this policy and revisit this in your transportation procedures. And that was also agreed upon with your legal department. <clears throat> Next, we have a no idling policy, EEAF. Again, a Brockton Public Schools specific policy. Um, this is the only policy in this section that was adopted in 2009, not 2002, so it's a little bit more recent. Um, I would compare this to the MASC policy EEAJ, which is titled Motor Vehicle Idling on School Grounds. Um, I would assume that there was an issue with idling at schools that caused the creation of this policy. And, you know, for purposes of kind of creating a more general policy, I would say the recommendation is to remove this policy, EEAF, and replace it with the MS MASC policy, EEAJ. Um, <clears throat> It's just a little bit more general and a little bit more of a streamlined policy. I don't think all the language that's included in the original Brockton policy is really relevant still today. Next, we have EEAG, Student Transportation and Private Vehicles. This is an MASC policy that's been updated to reflect its most recent version. Um, more or less just a typo in this policy. Next, we have EEAJ, Motor Vehicle Idling on School Grounds. This is that MASC policy that's not included in your current policy manual that I would recommend replaces the Brockton Public School specific policy, EEAF, no idling. Um, you don't need both of them, you only need one of them. You can see this policy is quite a bit shorter and I will read this for the record. EEAJ, motor vehicle idling on school grounds. No motor vehicle operator shall cause or allow any motor vehicle operated by him or her on school grounds to idle unnecessarily except for any of the following reasons. Traffic conditions, queuing at a school for the purpose of picking up or discharging students, turbocharged diesel engine cool down or warm up, maintenance of appropriate temperature for school buses when accepting or discharging passengers not to exceed three minutes in any 15 minute period or one minute in any 15 minute period for other motor vehicles, for circumstances involving safety or emergencies and for servicing or repairing motor vehicles. And as these exceptions are more completely described in the below reference regulations, the term school grounds shall mean in or within hundred feet from the real property of the school, whether or not it is in session and shall include any athletic field or facility and any playground used for school purposes or functions, which is owned by the municipality or school district, regardless of proximity to a school building, as well as any parking lot uh, pertinent to such school athletic field facility or playground. Reasonable efforts shall be made by the district to identify by signage all known and actual air intake systems, which may be within 100 feet of an idling motor vehicle. A motor vehicle 
<clears throat> Operator shall not idle a motor within 100 feet of such air intake system unless the Brockton Public School District has determined that alternative locations block traffic, impair student safety, or are not cost effective. The Brockton Public School District shall erect and maintain in a conspicuous location on school grounds the, the words no idling signage as described below. All such signage shall contain appropriate size font so as to be visible from a distance of 50 feet. Um, and this is but the Mass General Law um, includes the language of no idling, penalties of $100 for first offense, and $500 for second and subsequent offenses. It shall be the responsibility of the school administration to ensure that each school bus driver employed by the Brockton Public School District and not by a school bus contractor shall, upon employment at least once per year thereafter, sign a document acknowledging the receipt of copies of MGL Chapter 90, 16B, and 540 CMR 27. The prohibitions can contained in MGL Chapter 90, 16B shall be enforced by state or local law enforcement agencies. Um, so this policy is actually quite a bit shorter than the Brockton specific policy that we've recommended it replaces. Um, and it has all the legal references attached. So I think it makes the most sense just to go with the policy that was updated last, I believe that was a 2016 MASC policy as opposed to the 2002. Next, we have EFC, Free and Reduced Price Food Services. This is an MASC policy that was updated to reflect its most recent version. Um, just some general language updates. And that's it. That was the last one. Does anybody have any questions? I don't think anyone has any questions. Um, we would like to thank you very much, Alyssa. That's a lot of work. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right, right. Yep. So, um, did anyone want to make a motion to accept E and L? Can you say that again? I was just asking. Um, nobody had any questions. So, um, if anyone would like to make a motion to accept. Motion to accept e and L. Revised. Second. Okay, I'll call the roll. Cynthia Mendes. Yes. Judy Sullivan. Yes. So, with, do, does anybody have anything else for the policy manual subcommittee. Alyssa, do you have anything or is she still with us? All set? Okay, so want to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Alyssa. You, Alyssa.